Imagine this. You are at home alone, and you hear a strange noise from the floor below. You are scared, but don't know what it is. So why does the unknown elicit fear in so many of us? Whether it is uncertainty of the identity of a person, an unfamiliar object, or unpredictability of how a known object will behave, why are we scared? To start off, let us refer to a situation such as this. One Halloween night, a group of kids stumble upon an abandoned house while trick-or-treating. Hey guys, isn't that the house that old man Jenkins used to live in? Oh yeah, but he's dead now. That's what she meant by used to, dummy. Rumor has it that no one has ever dared step into the house ever since, and that ghosts roam the house waiting for their next victim. That sounds like a challenge. You wanna go in then? Amy always acts so tough. She like, explores abandoned houses for fun. I think she should go in. But she's only a kid. Who cares? I double dog dare Amy to go in the house. Oh! She double dog dare her! Dare her! And so, Amy, against her will, was thrown into the house, being told that she would be let out after 15 minutes. Amy's uneasiness and fear can be explained from multiple perspectives and theories. From a cognitive perspective, people get scared because of personal risk perceptions in regards to their environment. Emphasis on the word personal. What you deem dangerous is not the same as what your friend or anyone else may deem dangerous. You may think fluffy bunnies are dangerous, which will make you fear them, but not everyone else thinks they're dangerous, meaning not everyone else fears them. People choose to fear things with explicit consequences because they perceive a greater risk impact. However, when doing that, they ignore the actual logistics of the danger, if any actually exist. People like to gamble, but at the same time want to minimize all risk factors because of personal safety concerns. When we lack the ability to perceive specific risks, we lose certainty in our safety and begin to form doubts, which may inevitably lead to fear. When it comes to the fear of the unknown, we perceive greater risk because we do not know what we're going up against, and therefore we do not know how to deal with the fear. If we do not act upon combating the stimulus, we end up getting scared. From an evolutionary perspective, people experience fear more readily when facing threatening stimuli. Arne Oman, who specializes in psychophysiological studies, proposed an explanation which stated that this happens because our ancestors found those stimuli dangerous in the past, and consequently that fear was passed down in order to protect future generations. In other words, you're probably scared of snakes because your ancestors were scared of them. Our fear and belief of non-existent things such as ghosts may have also been passed down from them to explain unusual supernatural phenomena that hinder their survival. This fear of the unknown may also have something to do with the loss of autonomy. Studies have shown that humans naturally feel less stress when we have control over a situation. No control means stress, and the unknown does exactly that. When we have no knowledge of what a certain object is or how it will behave, we will have a hard time trying to control it. Some may try to confront the unknown to gain knowledge about it and therefore control it, but when one is unable to conquer their fear, the unfamiliar stimulus may haunt them for a long period of time and leave them with no control to stop it. And sometimes our imagination can get the best of us. Fear works with cognitive appraisal. Depending on how one may interpret the potential dangers of the unfamiliar, they can feel an immense amount of fear even when the unknown stimulus they fear is actually harmless. For example, there was no actual danger in an abandoned house, 
but upon entering, Amy heard from the other children that ghosts haunt the house waiting for their next victim, and therefore, she presumed that the house was dangerous and feared unknown noises thinking something was going to hurt her. There are two ways that one can deal with their fear of the unknown. If we choose to directly deal with the stimulus that's evoking fear, we choose to fight. By staying and fighting the stimulus, one can show high levels of confidence. With more confidence, we can gain a higher sense of autonomy and therefore perceive a higher sense of control of the situation. If we have the initiative to further explore our environment, regardless of the threat, we may gain knowledge of that environment, and that increases our chances of survival. Because with more knowledge comes a higher understanding of our surroundings. For example, if it had not been for the fight response, we may have not explored space. Despite the fear we had towards the endless void of space, we still explored it, and through that exploration, we gained useful information. However, if we underestimate the dangers of what's causing our fear, we may end up getting harmed because of that fear. On the contrary, another response a person may resort to is flight, which can either be to run from the mysterious stimulus or wait for it to eventually go away. This flight response is beneficial because it lowers the risk of getting hurt by the unknown stimulus. It also ensures safety. However, it may be more stressful as one has less control of the situation. It may also condition us to fear anything unknown to us, and this constant fear can lead to anxiety disorders and many phobias. Every time a stimulus causing fear is not dealt with, fear of any unknown stimulus may grow. And here's our fun fact segment, in no particular order. A 40-something-year-old mom, known as SM, lost her amygdala to a degenerative disease. With no sense of fear, she readily approaches muggers, snakes, and other things that she knows intellectually to be dangerous. One of the non-essential systems fear puts on hold is the immune system. As a result, regular fear and anxiety can increase your susceptibility to disease. The legendary smell of fear is for real. A 2008 Stony Brook University study found that scared people give off pheromones in their sweat that can trigger fear in others. Interestingly, phobias are rarely seen in the elderly. Even if they once were, elderly people tend to grow out of them. Phobias mostly originate in the ages of 18 through 19 years old and can be extended to the ages of 45 through 50 years old. Extreme fear of an unknown object can be lessened by meditation or by changing one's thoughts and imagination. Also, if you keep thinking about what the unknown could possibly be, you will be less scared. So the next time you're at home and you hear a strange noise, whether you choose to stay where you are and run away from the noise, or to approach it and find out what it really is, the fear you feel from this unknown stimulus is completely natural. And each response has its own benefits that enabled our ancestors and will enable us to survive.